Interest in using VR to experience architectural design has increased over the past few years. However, it's a rapidly changing area, and it can be quite a task to identify the best way to incorporate VR so that you and your clients have a useful and enjoyable experience. Luckily, there are some really useful and very cheap, even free tools available that you can start using today. Once you have your model output from, for example, SketchUp, you can then use Lumion to convey your design in its real life or conceptual environment. Finally, combined with free and easy to use tools like Sketchfab and Mozilla Hubs, you can generate VR walkthroughs and share them online. Lumion features an option to create 360 degree images that you can then view on VR headsets. For most client needs, these 360 degree images are more than sufficient. But some architects would like the option to freely walk through their design to get an impression of its dimensions at an early stage of the design process. Some of the VR solutions up to now required a large clumsy headset with wires keeping you tethered to your device. On top of this, it was unlikely that your client had a powerful enough computer to install specific VR related software with high hardware demands. These days, technology has progressed and there are many solutions available that require only an internet connection and a light wireless headset. In this tutorial, we will show you how you can easily create a VR walkthrough of your CAD design using Sketchfab, a web-based 3D model sharing site. In a second tutorial, you will learn how to create VR walkthroughs of larger, more detailed CAD projects using Mozilla Hubs, another free web service for shared 3D environments. Now, Lumion has no commercial or business relationship with any of the tools or companies covered in these tutorials. We simply spotted them on the market and felt that they were useful solutions that some of our customers would really appreciate. We felt it would be valuable to explain how Lumion and SketchUp users can easily add these free tools to their workflows, tools that can be especially useful when physically getting to clients is difficult or not possible. All right, let's get started. A VR model lets you step inside of your design and can be useful for getting a lifelike impression of space, proportion, scale, and feeling all throughout the design process. VR technology has progressed so much in recent years. There are now several web-based solutions that offer easy, free functionality. As a reminder, this tutorial will show you how to use Sketchfab, a 3D model sharing site with a VR viewing option built in. Thanks to advances in wireless headsets like the Oculus Quest, you're able to walk around freely without having to worry about any cables or connections. Additionally, Sketchfab has a little view in VR icon at the bottom, which allows you to switch to an immersive view. This feature works best with the Firefox browser on the PC and the Oculus browser on the Oculus Go and Oculus Quest VR headsets. To load your model into Sketchfab, the first step is to export it as an FBX file from your CAD software. After that, just zip this file along with its textures and then upload the zip file right into Sketchfab. In Sketchfab, a free account lets you upload one model per month, but you can avoid this monthly limit by making your model downloadable for others. Commercial subscriptions start at seven euros per month and for 15 euros a month, you can upload your models privately so that only you and your team can access them. Once you've uploaded your model, you can use the Sketchfab 3D editor to make a few adjustments and create a more pleasant looking model for when you're in VR. For example, our model is very bright because we haven't given it any materials. Also, Sketchfab didn't pick up that the windows are transparent. We can fix this by going to the materials tab, clicking on a window and setting the opacity. We can move around the house using the three mouse buttons and by scrolling the mouse wheel. And we can also switch to a first person navigation through settings, navigation, first person. Now we can use the WASD keys to move around. Use the scroll wheel to move a little slower. Next, let's adjust the sunlight so that it lands nicely on the house. To do this, go to the light tab. The environment light option is on by default with an indoor setting. We can change this to a more suitable outdoor scene, such as Kirby Cove. Use the orientation, brightness, and shadow sliders to get the best result. In the post-processing filters tab, 
we can add ambient occlusion. This gives a nicer shadowing effect. It's important to know that post-processing filters are not shown in the VR headset, as you'll see in just a minute. We can save our position and viewing angle by going to Annotations and then double-click anywhere. Switching to the AR VR tab, we can scale the model and set the initial starting point where everyone will be located when we enter the scene in VR. Move the person inside of the house and scale him to 39. This strange number probably comes from a difference in units between the SketchUp model, its FBX export, and Sketchfab. Now, save the settings and publish. Click Exit to have a look at the model in your browser. All right, now it's time to put on our Oculus Go or Oculus Quest headset. Start the browser, go to Sketchfab, log into your account, which we've already done, and go to your model overview. Bookmark it so that you can get to your model quicker the next time you're using your VR headset. Click on your model and click on the VR icon at the bottom. On the Oculus Go, you can move around by pointing with your handset and clicking the trigger button. On the Oculus Quest, you can move around by pointing and clicking, but also by walking within the boundary you created. You'll get a much more immersive experience if the room you are walking in is larger than the virtual area within the VR headset. For instance, if you're in an empty hall or a parking lot, you'll have total freedom to walk around the virtual model of your design. We can further improve the realism or the immersive effect of the design by adding some basic materials and furniture. You can download pre-made seating arrangements from the SketchUp 3D warehouse or from the Podium browser. When adding models to the scene, make sure to hide all the small elements as they can slow down VR performance and they don't really add enough value. Add materials to all surfaces. Create logical groups in the outliner. If the outliner is not visible, you can show it through the window dropdown, default tray, outliner. Add a billboard with the photo of a person with a similar height as you. This helps setting the correct eye level in VR which is very important when you want to get an accurate impression of the dimensions. Export the model again. Zip the model and the textures together and upload to Sketchfab. When the upload is complete, perform the same adjustments in the 3D editor of Sketchfab. You can also show the background image by going to Background and unticking Ambient Environment. Set the blur to zero. All right, the lighting and shadowing are still a bit strange. It seems the ambient occlusion effect was not displayed inside the headset. We can improve the lighting quality with a technique called light mapping. There's a plugin for that in SketchUp. It's called LightUp. Now, you won't find it in the extension warehouse. However, you can download it from their website, but you will need to register. A fully functional 30-day demo version is available, and commercial licenses start at 159 euros per year. Let's load the original model again with no materials and no furniture. Install the LightUp plugin using the Extension Manager. Here, you should see four new icons. Click on Preferences and Capture. Let's keep all the settings at their default values. First, we can hide the glass layer to look into the house more easily. Click on Go. After a few seconds, our model gets some lighting and shadow effects. Navigation is slightly different with this plugin. If you look to the top left of the screen, you can see the instructions for moving the camera and light up and exploring your model. Pressing any other key will switch off the lighting and return you to SketchUp's usual way of working. To get the lighting back, you'll have to click Go again. Set the sun position the way you've always done it in SketchUp, using the Shadows tab. Next, we will bake the light maps to the textures and export the model. This can be done in one step. In the Capture dialog box, scroll down to Export Lighting. Only tick Swap Y and Z and Single Layer. Click on Model. Save in a separate folder. When we look into this folder, we see a series of texture files. 
These correspond with the groups from the SketchUp model. One texture for each group. The light maps are quite small. This is because we used a resolution of 25 centimeters, the default set by LightUp. This number corresponds with LightUp's system for calculating light based on the geometry of the model. Now, we can zip all the files together and upload the zip file to Sketchfab. Once Sketchfab is done processing, let's load the model into the 3D editor. The model doesn't look as nice as it did in SketchUp. The reason for this is that a lot of detail was lost when the light maps were created. To improve the model, you can update the following settings. 10 centimeter resolution, don't render both sides, don't set incremental, untick the real-time sun, and set the lighting distance to 3 meters. Now you can render and export again. Let's take another look at those light map textures. They have become bigger thanks to the increased resolution, and they appear to have more shading effects. Zip everything together and upload to Sketchfab again. It looks a lot better. We seem to have two main sources of light coming from different directions. One is the baked sun, which we obtain by unticking the real-time sun option in LightUp. The other is from Sketchfab's lighting system. We can disable Sketchfab's lighting in the first tab by setting shading to shade less. This will also improve the performance of your VR walkthrough when using wireless headsets. That looks much better. This is the same view that we will see inside the VR headset. And thanks to the better lighting, we're also getting a better idea of the space. Next, let's process the version of the house with the materials and furniture added. This time, we'll set the resolution to one centimeter to capture the finer details on some of the furniture. Tick ignore cache, but make sure to delete the cache just to be sure. Render again. Notice how much longer it's taking this time as a result of the furniture and the increased resolution. If the rendering takes less than a few minutes and a dialog box doesn't appear stating something like begin lighting using 10 million samples, or whenever you get a black or otherwise strangely lit model, something went wrong in LightUp. Deleting the LightUp cache usually works. If it doesn't, exit SketchUp when LightUp is active. Have a look at the light maps. Quite a few are at 2K by 2K resolution this time, the maximum size that LightUp creates. Zip everything and upload to Sketchfab again. Let's walk through the model. It's starting to look pretty realistic. Yet everything still seems a little dark. We can use Photoshop to make the light maps brighter. Here you can see a version of the model where all the light maps had their brightness set to 90 in Photoshop. We still have the Kirby Cove environment visible in the background. We can get the real environment of the house by going to its future location and taking a 360 degree photograph to use as a backdrop. You can upload the photograph into Sketchfab with a 15 euro per month subscription. The image needs to be in HDR format with an extension of .hdr or .exr. Most 360 cameras can only save their images in the JPEG format, but you can use Photoshop to convert an image to an HDR or EXR format as long as you first set it to 32-bit by going to the Mode options in the Image menu. Upload the HDR image in the Light section under Environment. It will take a while before it's processed. Now, we can apply it and have a look inside. Instead of using 360 photographs, we can also use 360 degree renders from Lumion. This has several advantages. The real location may be a mess, or there may be an existing house which needs to be replaced by our design. In Lumion, we can create the design setting with mature trees and have much more control over the sun's position. Also, by making multiple 360 images with different exposures, we can create a real HDR image instead of the flat JPEG image. Photoshop will allow us to combine multiple images into one HDR, as you can see now in this video. The last thing we need to do is set the transparency of the billboard man by going to Materials, Opacity, Mask. 
Use the same texture for the opacity and play with the slider until you get a result you like. Now we can walk through our model again. Sketchfab VR is great for getting an immersive feel of a design's dimensions, but when it comes to communicating a design to its fullest extent, Lumion makes it easy to prepare a series of photorealistic videos and pictures that highlight the finer details of your project, all while helping audiences feel and experience the spaces you've designed. After following the steps we showed in this tutorial, this is the visual quality we were able to achieve. This concludes the first tutorial about free VR walkthrough solutions for architects. In the next tutorial, we will go through some more advanced topics with detailed CAD models created in BIM design tools like ArchiCAD or Revit. We'll also show you how to perform VR walkthroughs with multiple people at the same time, with each person joining in from the comfort of their own office or home. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to get a notification for when the next tutorial comes out, make sure to subscribe and click the little bell icon next to it. I'll see you in the next tutorial.